this government. The poorer class of people get poorer, and the rich class of people get richer. In the rice fields around Georgetown, the Indian peasants are frustrated and angry. Hard, hard look up. Very hard look. All these walking in the mud, and we haven't seen anything at all. Some of us hardly get into getting food. A lot of people suffering bad. Walking from seven to seven in the mud, day and night. In the peasant villages, Cherry Jagan's orators are whipping up indignation. That in so far as people overseas are going to have a preponderating voice in the choice of candidates at the next election, the people of Guyana must be fighting for the electoral suffrage all over again. They had no right to vote in this country. Well, we here in this country suffering. A day out of they, they're making their money that side, and we in this country punishing. So they see why they could, they should vote from that side to this country. We don't vote for them. Why they vote for we? You see, I don't see why they is such thing like that. They have no interest in this country. Why they vote from there to here? We the people live here. We we see what happen here. We know why the problem for we. It's they not fair to me for one reason because the people are outside. I don't see what kind of interest they got in this country that they must vote for this country, and they got no interest in this country. We, the people who live in the country, we must vote for the country, not them people outside. Well, the whole thing is completely moral, in the sense that uh, never in the history of any country has there been such a big slice of the electorate coming from outside. I think in the UK and the United States, where this is allowed, it's done to a very small extent, maybe 1% of the vote. The opposition leader, Chetty Jagan. They have no connection with Guyana, save that they may have been born here. They don't live here, they don't pay any taxes here, they don't even know what's going on in Guyana. And the fact of the matter is that the foreign vote is likely to decide the electoral results at this election. In other words, who will be the government of Guyana? This whole thing is, is immoral. This is just another of the gimmicks being used by the opposition. At first they said we would not hold elections. Then secondly... Forbes Burnham. Prime Minister. They said we would use voting machines. Now voting machines have not been used. They've got to find another gimmick, and the gimmick now is the overseas vote, which is something that is provided for under the Constitution. I'm not in any way concerned about that. And I give politicians who are losing uh, the right to find gimmicks. This is a pretty serious gimmick in one sense, because unless I'm wrong, there are 67,000 foreign voters not that foreign forms. voters, uh, Guyanese six. resident overseas entitled to vote under the Constitution. Okay, fair enough. 67,000 people have been registered overseas. They are eligible to vote in this election. This forms one-sixth of your electorate. Now, is it fair that a sixth of your possible total electorate should be living overseas? There's no question of fairness. In the last American elections, over three million people overseas voted. It's a question of your constitution. If your constitution permits your residents overseas to vote, they are entitled to vote. What is all this nonsense about fairness? Can the constitution be unfair? If the government cannot win a fair election at home, has to resort to fraud, overseas voting, for instance, another turn comes around, it cannot even win by that kind of fraud, and therefore it has to impose a military dictatorship. Elections aren't elections unless they're free. As a matter of fact, perhaps it's somewhat tautologous to speak of free elections. Many people have told me, though, that this election is completely rigged. Sure, they will say that. Did they say that we were going to use voting machines? Did they say that we weren't going to have elections? Oh, you must pull a rabbit out of the hat every time. Is this really just a rabbit? It is a rabbit so far as I am concerned. Bornham has the makings of another Hitler in Guyana. And under American backing, they have propped him, they have put him there, and they're going to prop him up there. And this is dangerous for Guyana. For the people of Guyana, not only the people, 
We see the same kind of thing what is it led to in Vietnam. You, what do you think of Dr. Jagan? A communist. More of a communist even than Tito. Because while Tito objected to the Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia, as also did the Western Communist parties, he justified it. Can you give me any idea of what you think about him personally? A very charming person, but a most incompetent administrator. Do you think he's fit to rule this country, to govern this country? The electorate didn't think so in 64. And I have good reason to believe they wouldn't think so in 68 either. British housewives were surprised by the thought of non-existent Guyanese at their address. But in Guyana, the opposition parties are afraid. They say the election is not properly safeguarded against manipulation and fear the missing voters might pop up in the ballot box next Monday. Mr. Joe Hughes is one of the Guyanese officials handling the election in Britain. Between April and July, he says he was solely responsible for registering the names of all Guyanese living in Wolverhampton. Mr. Hughes and officials for other areas were handpicked by the Guyana High Commission in London. Their job was to find all Guyanese in their areas and get positive proof of their right to vote. The man in charge was the High Commission's first secretary, Mr. Patrick Tierans, chief registration officer for the whole of Britain. To find out just how well the operation was controlled, our reporter cross-examined Mr. Hughes in detail about his work as an election officer in Wolverhampton and the results. I belong to Bonaparte, party, you know. Would you consider yourself a party activist? No, I can't be. You see, once I took the oath, you know, it might be bad for my party that I took an oath to do a job which I can't help the party, but I can't be an activist, you know, I can't be an activist while I was doing this registration business. How many did you enroll in Wolverhampton? 41 Guyanese. And this is the sum total of the, yes. the Guyanese in Wolverhampton? Yes. yes. As far as you know? Yes. The official list claims that there are in fact over 220 people who are eligible to vote in Wolverhampton. Oh, this isn't true. Well, I have the official list. Well, this isn't true. There are 225 people this, on this list. This isn't true. This isn't true on Wolverhampton. This isn't true. Huh. This I isn't counted true. them up personally. Yes, yeah, so who gave you that list, you know? Well, this is an official list which is published. Given by? Given by the party to us. By a party. By a party. Well, I don't know this. But these are the official lists which are used by all parties. For, for It's an official government list. Yeah. I don't know this. You know, frankly, I, I, I'd like to to know more of this. Who, who, who would give you this information? And I'd like to see it also, you know. But it is an official printed list which is available to anyone to see and inspect. And to see it, more than 200 Guyanese in Wolverhampton? Well, I'll have to look at it, you know. I don't know, honestly, I don't know, so I'll have to look at this. If a party tells you that a party might say that, now, you know, if, if an agent does that, he's liable to prosecution. You think I would be? You think I would do that, be liable for prosecution? And at the time I know I'm trying to finish bar exams to do that and finish my own career, I wouldn't be so dumb. Last week, World in Action reporters invited the Guyana High Commissioner in London to explain the discrepancies in the lists of voters. The Commissioner is Sir Lionel Lucku, QC, CBE. He's ballot officer for Britain. He was unable to appear. But back in Guyana, his Prime Minister, Forbes Burnham, had no qualms about the overseas vote. Going back to the foreign voters, would you agree with a figure of just over 43,000 foreign registrants in Great Britain? It is not for me to agree or disagree. It is a matter of what comes out in the register under the processes set up by law. And you are satisfied that these processes, which were set up by law, are... Have been carried out. And are you satisfied that they were carried out accurately, efficiently, and that they are completely valid? So far as I am aware, yes. You are sure about this? So far as I am aware. You don't expect me to account for every single person all over the world, do you? Are you 100% satisfied that the electoral process, the setting up of the election, has been completely impartial? I am. Could you repeat that and amplify it? What have I got to amplify? As Prime Minister, I say that I am satisfied 
that the electoral process was impartial. Seven days ago, Mr. Burnham again reasserted that the lists of Guyanese voters in Britain were genuine. That is not true. Most of them are fakes. And the scale of the discrepancies indicates something more sinister than incompetence. Voting in Britain ends today, and later this week, Sir Lionel should fly home and cast the votes of Guyanese in Britain. We wonder whether our vanishing voters will reappear in the ballot boxes of Georgetown. Oh.